Hello everyone, my name is Zubair Ahmed Khan. I am assistant professor in USLLS JGS IP University, Dwarka, Delhi. Uh, my title of the module is Human Rights to Environment and Constitution of the World. Now it is under the subject of environmental law. I hope you have learned all other different modules of the environmental law and we are referring about here the human rights perspective of the environment in, throughout the world. So we will try to cover many aspects, many issues about the environmental law and how it has become important for the human rights perspective. Now for that purpose we are going to start with the introduction part. The moment when he talks about introduction part, it is very important to know the fact that a healthy environment and human rights, they are very much closely connected, rather I can say they are interconnected and they are mutually receptive also. Now the thing is that once I, once I say that they are closely connected, they are very much mutually receptive. So obviously it is quite clear that the close study between these two concepts is very important for environmental sustainability. And it is not only important only for the environmental suspense, sustainability, but in fact it is also important for environmental protections and the balance and it is important to bring the balance of the ecological, uh, ecological balance also. Because there, because when you are talking about environmental protection and as well as the uh, giving the balance in the ecology, that will give the fundamental rights, that will give the importance to the individuals, not only to the individuals, but to the indigenous community and overall it will serve, subserve the society also. So keeping in mind the same objective, keeping in mind the same philosophy, I am going to start with this particular ATOM module and describe you also. So when we talk about the introduction part, first thing we have to analyze that environment as a basic human right in the international level plays a very crucial role. The moment I say that it plays a very crucial role, it is important to understand and it is important to get back again to the preamble of the United Nations Charter where it is very much important and where one particular point is mentioned that is the encouragement of fundamental human rights. And that encouragement is so much wide, it's so much widespread altogether that it promotes social drive for the development. And that's obviously when it talks about the social drive for the development, it also talks about how to maintain the dignity and recognition of human rights in the fundamental uh, principle also. So these principles we are talking about that in how encouragement of fundamental rights plays a very crucial role for bringing the change in the life of a person, for bringing the change in the standard of a human dignity also. So keeping in mind these two objectives that the United Nations Charter has developed and has formulated a number of articles, number of conventions also. But once we are talking about preamble of the uh, United Nations Charter, they have, also, uh, they have also played a very crucial role in the formulation of United Nations Declaration for Human Rights. Now when you start talking about United Nations Declaration of Human Rights, we find out that this is, seems to be a very reliable document to establish and to evaluate the relationship between international human rights and the jurisprudence. And when he, because that, but this particular declaration talks about different perspective, different dimensions of political rights, civil rights, economic rights, social rights, culture rights to protect the basic rights and, and of course it also covers how to tackle the issues whenever the matter of evaluation comes. So this is you can see one thing that when you are talking about these perspectives, these rights, obviously it is also referred with social justice, economic justice, political justice also. So United Nations declaration has come with two particular conventions in the two particular uh, protocols in the year 19, 1966 also. One it is on civil and political rights and another is on economic and cultural rights also. Now the thing which we have to understand that how this environmental rights plays a very crucial role under the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights. Now when we talk about the environmental law, how can we understand the environmental law as a civil and political rights? There it is very much important that access to the information which is closely connected to the judicial approach in the form of remedies and in the form of political function is very important here. No, but this is not the only perspective. There are other perspectives which is important here that overall involvement and participation of the indigenous communities in the environmental decision making process is very much clear, is very much crucial for the protection of the life, of the property, protection of other things from the environmental degradation. 
but this is one which we talks about environmental law as a civil and political rights. The moment when we talks about economic the environmental rights as a social and economic rights, it basically talks about clean and healthy environment. Why I'm talking about that it basically talks about clean environment because there it lies a very important point that is the protection of environmental quality. This environmental quality has plays, uh, has also a very fundamental basis for the environment uh, for the uh, environmental jurisprudence. Now the next right which I am going to discuss after environmental law, uh, environmental right as a civil and political rights and as well as a social and economic right that is environmental right as a collective right. Now this environmental right as a collective right is also very substantive, plays a very substantive role in maintaining the ecological balance and it is not only with respect to maintaining the ecological balance but these communities plays an exclusive role to decide on the uh, overall the manage proper management of the indigenous resources and how we can tackle with these resources is important here. Now the third perspective in which we are going to discuss about that is what is the opinion about the close relationship between environmental law, law and as well as the human rights also as per the Stockholm Con Con uh, conference on 1972. The moment we are talking about the Stockholm conference 1972, it is quite clear and it is very much explicitly mentioned that state has a duty to preserve and protect the environment. And the second important feature which is mentioned that the state has to plan for the common good principle so as to subserve the present and the future generation. This is what we call it as sustainable development because you see it is the Stockholm conference 1972 which basically talks about apart from preservation and protection that is the sustainability, environmental sustainability that is for, for, preserve, uh, for the benefit for the present and the future generations. Another, there is another interesting convention which came across that is the Rio Declaration on Environment and the, and the Development 1992. Now this Rio Declaration on Environment and Development, they have created a kind of a systematic mechanisms and this systematic mechanism is very much required for the sustainable development. Unlike the Stockholm con uh, this conference 1972, this uh, this Rio Declaration has more or less emphasized upon the uh, one issues that is the environmental degradation, and they have said that this environmental degradation has a far-reaching effect on the human rights and, in fact, the infringement of the human rights. Rio Declaration of uh, Development 1972. It's also a very interesting area where we have referred about environmental sustainability and how the systematic management has to be done, the systematic prayer procedure has to be done altogether. But there is another feature which is, has come across in this perspective and it has been included in the Rio Declaration that is the emphasis upon environmental degradation. Now environmental degradation is something a very serious matter and which has a far reaching effect and in fact has been, it has been realized by the Rio Declaration also that events it has a far reaching effect it has basically a blatant resulted into blatant violation of the fundamental right, fundamental human rights so this is how these two these two convention that is stockholm declaration and the rio declaration 1992 has played a very crucial role for the close study of environment and the uh, human rights next point which next issues which i am going to discuss that what is the opinion what is the uh, main emphasis has been there under the millennium development goals the moment when talks about millennium development goals there is one particular point which is mentioned that is the sustainability of environment and this sustainability of environment talks about different policies different strategies of the countries and to counter the main problem and the persistent problem of environmental degradation Third important feature of this Millennium Development Goal is that is protection of ecosystem through the control of the biodiversity loss. Now these three, uh, three points they are very much connected very closely connected to each other and that serve the purpose of Millennium Development Goals that because it is because this environmental degradation is a very serious matter and the thing is that when we uh, when you come with some certain specific procedures where you can control the loss of biodiversity either due to human actions or either due to some natural events that obviously plays a very crucial role. This, this is what we have discussed about the Millennium Development Goals. 
Now the, in the Millennium Development Reports, these things which has been referred, there is another specific point which have taken inspiration from the Millennium Development Goals and even from the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights, that is the Special Rapporteur on Human Rights and the Environment which was based, which was formulated in the year 2012 and in fact it plays a very crucial role altogether where they have explained about environmental consciousness for the state to provide protection. Now this, what is this environmental consciousness? Students, this environmental consciousness is something where the state has to have a serious look upon the protection, about the preservation of the environment. So this is what this special reporter of this human rights uh, and the environment has, they have referred all together. Now when they have referred about these issues on the preservance and the protection of human uh, this environmental rights. They have also referred about a kind of an obligations upon the state to maintain these things before the uh, before the authorities also and to serve, serve the common justice uh, good service also. Now there is another issue what the main issue which we are going to discuss that is what is the interpretation of right to life in a clean environment in many international forms. First thing which we are going to discuss that is the additional protocols to the Inter-American Convention on the Human Rights which has been established in the year 1924. Now this particular convention, there is a particular article which is mentioned, Article 11. This Article 11 talks about three important rights. One it talks about that is right to live in a healthy environment. Second it talks about access to basic public services. And third feature it also talks about the duty of the state is to protect and improve the environment also. Now these three points which has been emphasized in the, this additional protocols. But this is not the way where is another convention which is directly related with the health issues and that is convention on the right of the child which has been established in the year 1989. So there is a particular article, article 24 clause 2. Uh, subpart C which basically talks about the maintenance of good health among the children so as to control the disease, so as to control the malnutrition, so as to control the uh, damage which are directly and directly resulted from or directly directly is a result of rather I can say environmental pollution, environmental degradation also. So you see in this particular it's, it is about the health, it is about the community health rather I can say. It is about the, uh, the sanitation of the, uh, of the children which has been referred. So you, we can infer one important point that the right to have a good health, right to have a sanitation plays a very important role and which can be interpreted into the purview of right to life also. There is another particular convention which I am going to discuss that is the African Charters on the Human and People's Rights which has been established in the year 1981. So there is a particular provision which that is article 24 where it has been clearly mentioned that there is the availability of right to acceptable and suitable environmental which is compatible to their development. So you see students there it talking about that suitable environment which is very much very much conducive to the development the meaning thereby this particular convention talking about the development perspective and uh, talking about the environment preservation of the environment also. They are talking about the economic development, they are talking about the promotion and the encouragement of the environment. So there they are finding a kind of a close connection between these two concepts. Now keeping in mind these things, a very particular issues which has been raised and time and again such different complexities has been raised before the European Convention on the Human Rights which has been established in 1950. Now when this convention has come into picture, the issues which has been raised, whether we should discuss, whether we should infer certain relationship between human rights and environment or not. And unfortunately also in this particular convention, there is no discussions about the environment and how they are closely connected with the human rights.